Hey, have you stopped to consider the role that hope plays in your life? Like for me, it is fuel that gets me up in the morning, helps me get through hard times. Like, like maybe you go to work and maybe, you know, your work environment isn't something that you just like go to because you love it, right? Maybe you go to work because you have the hope that at the end of the week or the end of two weeks or the end of the month, they're going to give you a paycheck, right? They don't give it to you at the beginning of the day. No, you show up, you work, you deal with clients and customers and do all the stuff you need to do in order to get that paycheck and you're moved along by that, by that hope. Um, you know, I think this is why the, the Bible talks about how, how important it is to have hope in our lives and to make sure your hope is tied to something secure, you know, that, that's not going to be something that, 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 that's going to let you down someday, something that's just going to poof into, you know, not exist anymore. You know, sometimes we can very easily put our hope in things that are going to let us down. So the Bible says, hey, make sure your hope is tied to something that is, that is secure, that is firm, like the book of Hebrews in chapter 6. It says, hey, we have this hope. It's like an anchor for our soul, what Jesus has done for us on the cross, forgiving us our sin and opening it away to our Heavenly Father so that we know that in any, everything, you no know, death, life, good times or bad times, that our relationship with God and spending eternity with Him, okay, it doesn't hang in the balance. It is secure for us who have put our faith in Jesus. So we have this hope. And, and it can lead us along. It can help us get through hard times, just like sometimes we look to things to give us hope and help us get through hard times, right, man? Like during football season. Sometimes the thing that gets you through Monday is Monday night football, right? You're like, just make it through the day. Monday night football's coming. Or sometimes for, you know, during a hard week, it's just get to the weekend, just get to the weekend. Or it's you got a vacation that you're looking forward to, right? And so you just, just get to that vacation and get, get to that vacation reset after the vacation or it's, it's retirement you have the hope of retirement so just get to retirement and it's these things in the future that we're looking forward to that we put our hope in that help us kind of get along and help us kind of change our attitude and get through some hard times let me put it to you this way but let's say you go into work tomorrow and your boss says they're they're gonna have to let you go but they say hey you know george the janitor he he ended up quitting and so no one's there to wipe down all the countertops and to, to clean the bathrooms and to do all the vacuuming. And so, man, if you take his job at the end of the week, man, our company, we'll, we'll give you 10 bucks, he says. It's like, who's signing up for that? Like, I'm probably not. Uh, but if you're really strapped for cash and you need that 10 bucks, okay, I guess you would maybe go and you'd scrub the toilets and you'd disinfect all the countertop, but you would do it and be like, man, this is the worst job ever. I can't believe I'm doing this. 10 measly bucks. It would be a terrible existence. But let's change the scenario just a little bit. Let's pretend you go into work and your boss says, hey, um, so obviously due to some financial constraints right now, we're going to have to let people go and, and you're on that list. So you can pack up your stuff. But, okay, I've got good news. I've got good news. George the janitor quit, okay? Nobody wants to do his job. Like nobody, okay, wants to, to scrub the toilets and nobody wants to clean the countertops. And well, we, we have this reserve fund, okay, just in case of emergencies. And if you come back and do this, okay, if you come back this week to scrub the toilets, clean the countertops, we will give you a million bucks. It's like, who's signing up for that? I am, okay, you are, right? You're gonna be scrubbing those toilets and vacuuming and cleaning off those countertops. Be like, man, this is the greatest job ever. I love this, mm, yes. Why? You know, your current reality hasn't changed. You don't have the million dollars yet. You are still scrubbing toilets. You are still washing off countertops. What has changed is your hope. Your hope of something better that is coming in the future. And see, the Bible says, hey, we need this hope. We need this hope to help us get through some hard times, the hope of heaven, the hope of what God is doing in our life, that he is working for our good. And that's what the prophet Isaiah encouraged the Israelites to, to, to believe in, to know, to trust, to remind themselves of when they were going through a hard time. Open up your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 4 is an incredible chapter. You read it. If you've read much of the New Testament, you're like, man, a lot of this stuff is familiar. It's like, yeah. Jesus came to fulfill a lot of this and give us this hope. But the prophet Isaiah begins in chapter 40 saying this, hey, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her heart service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand 
double for all her sins. Yes, the prophet Isaiah is saying, hey, Israelites, take hope. Like, understand, a better day is coming. Like, your punishment, the bad things that, that were going to come your way with the, the maybe the Babylonians, the Assyrians, and, and plagues, and famine, and just bad, all this bad stuff that has been going on, Israelites. Hey, understand, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. A better day is coming. Look forward to it, he says. And then he wraps up the chapter talking about hope this way and the power of it when he says this, Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And that's the power of hope. Keep us moving along even during really tough times. In 1981, Eugene Lang, a successful businessman who, who had grown up in East Harlem, New York, ended up going back to the, to the grade school where he had gone to school and graduated from. He went back to encourage these students 50 years after he had been in their shoes, after he had started companies and become very successful, a successful entrepreneur, businessman. And, and he went back to encourage them, said, hey, I've, I've been in your shoes before. You can do it. Work hard. No, but he kind of noticed, okay, the neighborhood's changed a little bit. The school looks a lot different. And, well, as he got ready to give his speech, the principal pulled him aside and said, hey, Eugene, just, just wanted to let you know, like, about 80% of the kids in, in, our, in our school program, okay, in our, in our school system here, they're not scheduled to graduate. They're, they're predicted to, to drop out before they ever get that high school diploma. And so just wanted to let you know that. And so Eugene hears that disparaging news, and then he looks at his speech, and he says, you know, work hard, study hard. Like, that's not going to encourage these kids. That's not going to give them hope. And so he scrapped his speech and just began to talk from his heart. And he said, hey, understand this, kids. Hey, if you work hard, you can do something great with your life. He says, you can get good grades. You can go to college, okay? But he says, hey, if you graduate, Okay, you get the grades to get accepted to a college. I will pay for your college tuition. And that changed everything for these kids. I mean, you can read it for yourself. Research Yu Jing Lang, businessman, 1981, East Harlem, public school. I think it was 121, I think it was. And all of a sudden, that graduating class, those eighth graders, went from being about 80% who weren't expected to graduate, 90% of them getting a high school diploma, or something equivalent to that. Why? What changed? It, it wasn't their neighborhood that changed. It wasn't their families that changed. The teachers were the same. Curriculum was the same. What changed was the fact that they had hope. The fact that they believed, okay, if I do the work, if I, if I make it through, there is actually something better waiting for me on the other side. I have the hope of actually going to college. He provided that to them. And Christians, we have a a greater hope than going to college, having someone pay for our, our college tuition. We have a savior who came and paid for our sins. He died and, and reconciled us to our heavenly father. And we get to live for eternity with him. And even today, we can have life with him. As Jesus says, hey, this is eternal life, that you may know your heavenly father, have a relationship with him today. So I don't know what you're going through today, but, but, I, but I pray that you would have the hope, man, that no matter what happens, man, God is working for your good. And we know that because he sent Jesus to die in our place, to pay for our sins, so that we would have, have hope no matter the discouraging season we might be facing.